I'm just intrigued at why there's so many innovative companies out here and how they're coming up with some of the most creative ideas. What is that, what is that process? So I think if you think a look at Israel and you look at the culture here and you compare that to the US, in the US for the most part, if you live within the system, you're okay. In Israel, if you live within the system, you're not gonna be okay. So you always have to find ways, I mean, to find your way around to navigate. It's the same thing on the street when you drive the same way. Nobody's driving straight lines. They all kind of cut, you know, all the lanes, switch right and left and everything. It's a mindset, it's a mentality. How do you find like an easier way, better way, faster way? How do I get faster to where I need to be? It's the same thing applies to security. Same thing applies, I mean, to how we do it here, you know, for everything we're doing in security. So how do you do that? How do you don't just kind of go straight and check the boxes, make sure everything is okay? No, how do you get faster to the end? Did you ever work in cybersecurity here in Israel? I have not, no. No, you never worked here? No. So, when you communicate to your security team and, and to the non-security people back in Kansas City, you, I would assume you would address them differently than you would uh, address a group of Israelis, especially if they work in cybersecurity, right? Right. Explain what that difference is. <laughs> so, the main difference that I see when I talk to Israelis here, the first thing everybody have on their mind is defense. And that's where I'm coming from. When I talk to friends in the U.S., most of them, like in the security space, starting from, a, from some kind of a form of compliance. And making that transition or that, or that jump from that mindset between compliance and defense, that's the main conversation, main discussion I have with all of my friends in, uh, in the U.S. Really? So the, they just can't get defense top of mind? It always comes compliance because they're probably more worried about you know, losing money, right? That, and also I guess in the U.S. people are more afraid of the lawyers. So that's probably the biggest threat more than the hackers. So usually, I mean, they want to make sure they check the box and they got their rear side covered. And then they're trying to think about defense. All right. What would be your advice to the rest of the cybersecurity cyber community in the US, the world, wherever, to why they would want to think like an Israeli or it's never going to happen because it's so culturally ingrained here? I mean, part of it is culturally ingrained, but I think, you know, learning from that culture and learning from the situation, I think there's a lot of that, you know, people can learn from how Israel approaches security. And I think first and foremost, like everything else in business, you have to think about the risk. And when you think about the risk, you have to consider the threats. That's where you should start from. Once you understand that framework, then you need to think about, okay, how do I, can I defend against that? How can I combat that? And from there, back into your compliance, not the other way around. Excellent. Hey, Yaron, thank you so much for your time. Always a pleasure, Dave. Thank you.